Anyway, Judge Gertner, please come up here. And we are going to start. That is amazing. <laughs> We're going to start uh, tonight with a, an, a topic that's near and dear to my heart, and I know Judge Gertner's heart, and that is women in the workplace. I don't think I have ever gotten an introduction like that. We were the transitional generation, right? You had to play all sides of the bargain. So being a valedictorian on the one hand, but a cheerleader on the other. And I think I've straddled, not exactly those fences, but fences all my life. Megna and I talked a little bit about, I only have five minutes, which is inconceivable to me, but in any event, talk a little bit about the Anne-Marie Slaughter on the one hand and Sheryl Sandberg debate on the other. So let me start off by saying that one should not mistake the message for the messenger. You can shoot the messengers, but don't shoot the message. So one messenger was Anne-Marie Slaughter, who had to give up perhaps one of the most difficult jobs in the galaxy, 24-7 international job, foreign policy job in the, uh, in the, uh, Clinton, in, in the Obama administration. Uh, with a teenage son who needed some help in Princeton. These were not going to be easy things to juggle. A man couldn't have juggled that. A man could, no one could have juggled that. So that's the one messenger. The other messenger, of course, and then she, she was forced to go back to her terrible home life as a tenured professor at Princeton. Uh, so one messenger. The other messenger, of course, is Sheryl Sandberg, who is the CEO of Facebook and who is worth billions. Uh, so those are the messengers. But the message was interesting and I think important. So from, from Anne-Marie Slaughter's point of view, it was a message about how it work family issues are institutional problems, not individual problems. It drives me crazy when young women talk about how my generation gave them the choice to either be at home or to work. This is before the economic crisis hit. That our, we were not only about choice. It was not a choice about a family life in which women were still expected to play most of the roles and a work life in wh which was still not family friendly. If women feel driven from work and being pushed to the home, it's because we didn't change things enough. And the movement that I was a part of, and now I can say it, yes, the movement I was a part of uh, was to talk about the revolutionary potential of both work and family, to change roles and change the institutions of work. So Anne-Marie is right, there's an institutional problem. And you know, this may be, a, I may be still a judge on the one hand, on the other hand, Sheryl Sandberg is also right. She talks about women leaning out, in other words, getting out of the rat race, anticipating problems in the future when they have kids and that that's a problem. And people have taken, criticized her for describing this as, you know, it's women's fault. She has, there is something to that. The young women law students that I deal with talk about the opacity of discrimination today. Discrimination is opaque. When you get turned down for a job, or you don't get hired for something, or you don't get promoted, you assume it is you. When the judge that I ultimately clerked for asked me if I would ever marry and have children, and if I answered that question wrong, I wouldn't get the job. I didn't assume it was me. I knew it was him. <laughs> so what happens is that the women, the younger women, assume it's them, assume it's a personal problem, assume that they just have to make the right choices, and indeed lean out. Uh, I gave a talk at the University of Hastings Law School, and one of the women around the table, I said, what are you going to do when you graduate law school? And she said, well, I'm going to go into trusts and estates, because it will be easier to combine with a family. I said to her, do you have a family? No. Do you have a boyfriend? No. Do you like trusts and estates? No. <laughs> but this was the, she was sort of anticipating problems later on. This is a serious problem. And Sheryl Sandberg is right to put her finger on it. Because what happens is that when you wind up at the higher echelons of law and business, there will be fewer and fewer women, which will then provide the excuse for the 15% CEOs uh, that are women, the 15% women partners uh, in law firms. So essentially, they're both right. Uh, it, it requires institutional major change. We have to start from scratch, and I'm prepared to pick it anywhere, anytime. Thank you. <laughs> Five minutes? 